Hello everyone. Today we will be talking about the hypoglossal nerve lesions. We will talk about both the upper motor neuron lesions and the lower motor neuron lesions of the hypoglossal nerve. Let's first talk about the lower motor neuron lesions. As you all know, hypoglossal nerve is the 12th cranial nerve and it emerges through the hypoglossal canal. The lower motor neuron lesion of the hypoglossal nerve can occur anywhere along the along its path. Most commonly it occurs where it exits the uh, exposterior cranial fossa through the hypoglossal canal. Let's draw a model of tongue here. Let's suppose this is the left side and this is the right side. Let's draw a model of tongue here. Let's say that this box represents our tongue. This side of the box represents the left sided muscles of the tongue, both the intrinsic and the extrinsic muscles and the right sided box represents the right side of the tongue. The main muscle that we are concerned with right now is the genioglossus muscle. Let's review the action of the genioglossus muscle. The genioglossus muscle of the right side when contracts unilaterally, it pulls the tongue to the opposite side, which means that when the muscle of the, uh, when the, muscle of the right side contracts, it will pull the tongue to the, toward the left side and when the left side genioglossus contract, it will pull the tongue towards the right side okay now let's draw the uh, hypoglossal nerve nucleus here this side will innervate uh, left the left side in nucleus will innervate the left side of the tongue and the right side in nucleus will innervate the right side of the tongue let's say that the lesion is here somewhere along the pathway of the hypoglossal nerve now when the lesion is at the right side, the right sided muscles of the tongue will be paralyzed along with the right side of the genioglossus muscle. But the left sided genioglossus and all the other muscles of the left side of the tongue are, 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 are totally normal. Okay, so when the uh, right side is paralyzed and the left side is normal, the left sided genioglossus will contract and it will pull the tongue towards the right side. So there will be a deviation of the tongue towards the right side. As you can see, the tongue will deviate toward the ipsilateral side, which means that it will deviate toward the same ipsilateral side. It will uh, move deviate toward the same side of the lesion. Okay, another thing that you, you must know is that when there is the lower motor neuron lesion, there is also an also two other phenomena associated with lower motor neuron lesion uh, these phenomena are associated with almost every lower motor neuron lesions of the uh, every cervical nerve spinal nerve every spinal nerve and also the uh, cranial nerves these two phenomena are fasciculation and atrophy now why there is the fasciculation and the atrophy of the muscle uh, the fasciculation is the phenomena by which when we touch a muscle fiber uh, when we touch a denervated muscle fiber there is there are some kind of ripples over the muscle uh, the muscle fibers contract short for a short period of time uh, the physiologist proposed a mechanism behind this and this mechanism is as follows that the uh, that the acetylcholine that is released at the neuromuscular junction uh, let's, let's draw here the neuromuscular junction they, they, they say that the acetylcholine that is released at the neuromuscular junction also uh, causes the uh, sorry the acetylcholine that is released at the neuromuscular junction is only released at the neuromuscular junction and these neuromuscular junctions on, are only present where the uh, post where, where the nerve fiber innervates the muscle so uh, all over the muscle all over the muscle membrane there are no acetylcholine receptor the receptors are present only on the postsynaptic membrane or the postsynaptic membrane uh, you can say the neuromuscular junction but when a muscle is denervated when an acetylcholine supply is less when a muscle is denervated and the acetylcholine supply is less, the acetylcholine receptors are formed all over the muscle membrane so that when you tap the muscle fiber, the acetylcholine receptors are activated and the muscle fibers contract and this phenomena is called the fasciculation. Now let's talk about the atrophy. Atrophy is the reduction and reduction in the size and reduction in the number of the muscle fibers and atrophy is also associated with the lower motor neuron lesions. Uh, now another mechanism that is proposed behind atrophy is uh, that the acetylcholine that is released at the neuromuscular junction also causes some degree of uh, some degree of hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the muscle and it also plays some role in the uh, growth of the muscle you can say so when the muscle is denervated uh, the acetylcholine is not released uh, so that the uh, acetylcholine when acetylcholine is not released uh, the muscle will start to atrophy so uh, there are the three characteristics of the uh, lower motor neuron lesions of the hypoglossal nerve, the ipsilateral deviation of tongue, ipsilateral deviation, muscle fasciculation, 
मसल फैसिकुलेशन एंड एट्रोफी मसल फैसिकुलेशन एट्रोफी एंड इप्सिलेट्रल डिविएशन ऑफ द टंग ओके नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द अपर मोटर न्यूरॉन लीजन ऑफ द हाइपोग्लोसल नर्व फॉर और द सुपर न्यूक्लियर लीजन ऑफ द हाइपोग्लोसल नर्व लेट्स पोज दैट हेयर वी हैव ड्रॉन द सेरिब्रल कॉर्टेक्स ऑफ द लेफ्ट साइड एंड द सेरिब्रल कॉर्टेक्स ऑफ द राइट साइड हेयर इज द हाइपोग्लोसल न्यूक्लियस ऑफ द लेफ्ट साइड एंड द हाइपोग्लोसल न्यूक्लियस ऑफ द राइट साइड लेट्स पोज दैट दिस अपर पोर्शन ऑफ द हाइपोग्लोसल न्यूक्लियस रिसीव ऑल द मसल ऑफ द टंग एक्सेप्ट द जीनियोग्लोस एंड दिस अपर एंड द अपर अपर पोर्शन ऑफ द न्यूक्लियस लाइक द अदर वन इनरवेट्स दी ऑल द मसल ऑफ दंग एक्सेप्ट द जीनियोग्लोस एंड द लोअर पोर्शन इनरवेट्स इनरवेट्स द मसल कॉल द जीनियोग्लोस हेयर दीज टू ब्लॉक्स रेप्रेजेंट द जीनियोग्लोस मसल एंड दीज एरोज रेप्रेजेंट द फंक्शन ऑफ द जीनियोग्लोस मसल एंड द लेफ्ट साइड जीनियोग्लोस मसल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट यूनिलेट्रली इट विल पुल द टंग टूअर्ड द राइट साइड एंड वाइस वर्स लेफ्ट ऑल द कॉर्टिको न्यूक्लियर फाइबर्स हेयर The cortical nuclear fibers to the upper part of the nucleus come from both the cerebral cortices. It will be both crossed and uncrossed innervation, just like that. But in case of the genioglossus part of the hypoglossal nucleus, there is only the contralateral innervation. That the right-sided genioglossus nucleus receives only the left-sided cerebral cortex fibers, and the left-sided genioglossus nucleus receives only the right-sided cortical fibers. Okay, now let's say that the left-sided nucleus is paralyzed, or there is some lesion of the left-sided nucleus. Then all the fibers em emerging from the left-sided nucleus will be uh, paralyzed or denervated. You can say they 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 will be degenerated. Okay, now the uh, upper portion of both the nuclei, because they receive uh, innervation from both the uh, both cerebral cortices, right and left. so they will not be denervated but the genioglossus muscle because it receives only the uh, fibers from the opposite side it will get uh, it will degenerate and uh, there will be lesion of this nucleus now let's suppose that because these fibers these fibers which are coming to the opposite side the genioglossus muscle they are paralyzed now okay now uh, let's suppose that here is the innervation of the genioglossus muscle and here is the innervation of the other sided genioglossus muscle now this part of the nucleus is paralyzed which means that this portion that the uh, right sided genioglossus is paralyzed when the right sided genioglossus is paralyzed the tongue will be moved through the left sided genioglossus which is intact towards the right side that the tongue will be the tongue will deviate towards the right side uh, and you can see uh, the right side is the contralateral side so in case of an upper motor neuron lesion there will be contralateral deviation of the tongue you have to remember these phenomena that in case of the lower motor neuron lesion there is the ipsilateral phenomena and uh, in case of an upper motor neuron lesion there is the contralateral deviation of the tongue now how will you differentiate between whether it is a right sided lesion or a left sided lesion or whether it is upper motor neuron lesion and a lower motor neuron lesion uh, first of all there will be no fasciculation and no granulation or no atrophy in the uh, upper motor neuron type of lesion because the uh, acetylcholine fibers release acetylcholine fibers releasing acetylcholine leasing fibers are also are, are intact and hence the uh, post synaptic innervation of the uh, muscle fiber are intact Uh, in addition uh, when the hypoglossal nerve is uh, hypoglossal uh, nuclei are, uh, are degenerated there is almost always some other type of uh, other type of lesion associated with it because uh, the cortico nuclear fibers that descend towards the medulla and forms the cortico nuclear fibers they are grouped together with other cortico nuclear fibers or you can say uh, cortico bulbar fibers in case of uh, in case of innervation for the uh, cranial nerve nuclei so there is almost always there will be other nuclei associated Associated with there may be the um, parasympathetic uh, denervation of the uh, gut due to the uh, lesion of the dorsal nuclei of vagus, which is closely associated with the uh, hypoglossal nuclei in the uh, floor of the uh, fourth ventricle. Uh, there may be the uh, control uh, there may there may be uh, some kind of uh, uh, some kind of uh, sensory loss, uh, vibration loss, and uh, fine sensation may be lost on uh, on uh, on in the body due to the lesion of the uh, medial longitudinal fasciculus, and uh, and this is a very extensive phenomena, and uh, almost any type of uh, any type of structure that lies in the medulla can get lesioned. Uh, thank you very much.